In this video, I will provide you with five separate videos about stair building codes that you might find interesting. So let's go ahead and get started with our first video. Well, let's take a look at what the International Residential Building Code book says. This is the 2022 version, and this information can be found online also, about whether or not a door can actually swing or open over a stairway. And yes, believe it or not, this will include either direction, except for on the inside of the building, where the door can open in either direction. However, there is an exception to this rule and that would be exterior screen or storm doors that can open over a stairway. And I really don't know what the deal is here. However, the building code does allow it as long as the measurement from the top of the threshold to the top of the finished stair tread is less than seven and three quarter inches, which is also the maximum rise for a stairway in buildings with less than 50 occupants. Now keep in mind also that this might not be approved for a public stairway or a building with more than 50 occupants. And you should always check with your local building and safety department to verify all of the information you find on the internet. Because believe it or not, your area might not be using these particular building codes. In this video, I will provide you with the top five stair building codes, in my opinion, that you will need to be aware of when building a set of stairs with a landing. And the first one on the list will be the minimum width of the stairway, and that will be 36 inches. Now that is 36 inches after everything is finished after the drywall has been installed and after any of the wood trim has been installed. So if you have a stairway that is going to be in between two walls, then you might want to allow for anything you're going to be adding to the side of those walls, like drywall, wood trim, or skirt board. Next up on the list will be the minimum headroom height, and that line will be measured from this line here, or the front of each step, but it will not be measured from the top of the step on any other part of the step. Again, it's going to be measured from this line here. You're going to go straight up plumb or vertically level, and again, it can be measured from the front of each step or from this line here. Next up will be the individual vertical rise that will be a maximum. It cannot be larger than seven and three quarters of an inch. And I would strongly suggest that you check with your local building authorities, building departments, because they might not be using the codes from the 2021 International Building Code book. Next up, the minimum tread depth will be 10 inches. However, when I first started working, it was 9 inches, and the vertical riser height was 8 inches. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the minimum width or depth of the stair landing itself. And according to these building codes, the depth of the stair tread will need to be the same or larger than the width of the stairway. And that would be the same for the top or the bottom. So the depth of this landing here will need to be the width of this or larger. And this was something a long time ago that used to have a 36 inch minimum, which would be the same as the minimum width for a stairway. However, they have changed the verbiage on it. So again, these building codes are from the 2021 Residential Building Code book. And for the most part, these are building codes I like. However, if you do not like them, then check with your local building department to see if they have different building codes that might work better for your project or for you personally. Here's another stair building code that can be confusing, but hopefully by the time you're done watching the video, it will not be anymore. And it has to do with the stair treads and risers and the difference, the maximum allowable difference by most building codes is going to be three eighths of an inch difference. Now I will put a reference to the building code uh, books or one of the building code books where I got this from. 
And remember that not uh, all building departments around the world, these videos are watched all over the world, they are not always going to be the same, but they might be close. So for example, our maximum distance is going to be 3 eighths of an inch between the smallest measurement and the largest measurement for treads and risers. In our first example, we have six risers. Four of them are seven inches. One is six and seven eighths, and the other is seven and an eighth. And the smallest riser is six and seven eighths. The tallest one, seven and an eighth. The difference is a quarter of an inch. A situation like this would be acceptable because the small the difference between the smallest and the tallest is only a quarter of an inch. Here's another situation that would also be acceptable. We now have a seven and a quarter inch riser at the top, making it the tallest one. The difference between six and seven eighths and seven and a quarter is three eighths of an inch, so we're still fine here. However, if we raise this one to seven and three eighths of an inch, we now have a half inch difference between the smallest and the tallest riser. And this, of course, would be a situation that wouldn't be acceptable to most building departments. Now, the same principle applies to the steps. Maximum difference between the smallest, smallest and the largest. In this case here, we have a half of an inch. Something like this is not going to be acceptable by most building departments. However, a situation like this probably will. So if we take our smallest tread width or depth and the largest, we have 3 eighths of an inch difference. So each step can be off a little bit just as long as the, as the difference between the smallest and the largest is not more than 3 eighths of an inch. So I hope that makes sense. Now the biggest problem for something like this is usually going to occur at the bottom or the top of a stairway or a landing. And that's going to be because someone has added a different sized material to the bottom or the top. For example, you might add, um, you might be remodeling your home and then you decide to add three quarters of an inch of tile to the floor. And now you have a three quarter inch difference between the stair steps. Or you might choose to install treads um, that are a half inch thick on the top of your existing steps, creating a problem again at the bottom or the top of the stairways. In this video, I will answer one of our viewers' questions, and they were wondering if a landing is considered a step and therefore part of the stairway and not separate from the stairway. However, it might not always be part of the stairway. And I'm going to go into a little more detail about the reason why this question might need to be answered a little further in the video. So let's go ahead and take a look at the definition of the word landing. It might sound something like this, a level area at the top or bottom or between one flight of stairs and another. Then the definition of a stair step to move up or down like the steps in a stairway. Then the definition of a step to put one foot in front of the other and change your position. So if we agree with the definitions that I have just provided you with, then every time you move up and change your position or the elevation, then you would be taking a step. So we would have six steps leading up to another step and then six more steps leading up to our last step. And that would be the same in this case here and the same in this case here. And if we take a look at another stairway design with a landing, then we're going to have the same thing here. And the landing in this situation will be part of the stairway. However, that might not be the case here where we have a landing at the bottom and a landing at the top. And I think to provide you with a better question would be whether or not all of these landings need to be the same size 
and provide us with the same riser height. For example, could I have an 8 inch riser height on the lower landing and then 7 inch risers going up to the next landing and then 7 inch risers going up to the other landing and then having another 8 inch riser at the top. And according to the building codes that I've read, I think that would be true because a lower landing in a situation like this could be considered a different part of the building and not part of the stairway. However, this landing up here will be part of the stairway located in between two flights of stairs. So all of the risers with this color here will need to be the same height. However, that won't be the case for our first or last riser. However, the final say on this interpretation will be up to the people who work at your local building and safety department. Here is another viewer-inspired video who wanted to know why you were allowed to use pull-down stairs in a garage attic that weren't even close to meeting building codes and usually had small steps and tall risers. And even though I cannot provide you with reason why this is allowed, I can tell you that it is clearly stated in the International Building Code Book at the very beginning of the stairway section. And I will place those reference numbers along with a few of the building codes in the video description or comment area where there are three exceptions. Number one, stairways not within or serving a building porch or deck. Number two, stairways leading to non-habitable attics, which in most cases is going to be your garage attic. And number three, stairways leading to crawl spaces. And if that doesn't make sense, let me go ahead and provide you with an example of an attic that would not be habitable. And a habitable space, according to the definitions in this same book, will be a space in a building for living, sleeping, eating, or cooking. So if you don't have any of those in your attic, then you shouldn't have a problem using a smaller stairway or something with larger risers and smaller steps. And even though I'm providing you with these building code references, you will need to keep in mind that your building code representatives might interpret these codes differently or avoid using them altogether. And in our next example, I will provide you with a stairway going into a non-habitable crawl space area. So the difference between a crawl space and a basement is usually going to have something to do with a finished floor. So if you have an area like this where the bottom of the area is not finished in concrete and falls into the non-habitable definition, then you might be allowed to build a stairway that falls into the exception here and can be designed and assembled without using building codes. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos on YouTube. And if you can't find the videos on YouTube, make sure that you visit our website to find a complete organized list of all of the videos we've made so far.